Ahoy there! Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another Blueprint Breakdown video for Infinite Lagrange, the series that aims to look at every ship blueprint in the game and discuss the different variations on it and how you might decide to use those in fleets. Basically, are they worth it, what do they do, and how do you use them? Now this video is sponsored by Netties, so if you're worried about what that means for the trustworthiness of my content, please check the description down below for a link through to my Discord, I have put a public statement out there about the entire thing. In today's Blueprint Breakdown, we're going to be taking a look at the Jupiter Industries Eris-1 Destroyer. This is personally one of my favourite destroyer hulls in the game, it's a lot of fun, and it's readily available to most players very early on for a very small purchase. We'll discuss that in just a moment. Now if you do enjoy this video, please first of all let me know by hitting like on it and dropping a comment down below, especially letting me know what types of ships and what kind of content you'd like to see me put out in future for Infinite Lagrange. Also as well, if you do want to subscribe to the channel please do so, tap the notification bell, make sure it is set to all notifications so you never miss an upload. I usually aim to put Infinite Lagrange content out on a Monday or Tuesday but it does sometimes change. Finally if you want to go the extra mile to support this channel first of all thank you, secondly we have both a Redbubble merchandise store and a Patreon page that you can head over to and pledge at there. Finally of course come join me on the Catskull Discord linked in the description below, it's a great way to talk about all things Infinite Lagrange and of course join in the Infinite Lagrange official Discord as well. Anyway, with all of that out the way, boy that feels like it's getting longer and longer, let's jump into talking about the Jupiter Industries Eris-1 Destroyer. Now, first of all, the name. Jupiter Industries ships tend to be named after celestial bodies in our own solar system. The Eternal Storm Battlecruiser, for example, is of course named after the Eternal Storm on Jupiter. Things like Io and Callisto are moons of Jupiter. And indeed here the Eris-1 is, like Quawa, a sort of, I forget what they call it now, a Kuiper Belt object. It is a large pseudo-planet on the very edge of our solar system, orbiting in what is referred to as the Kuiper Belt. Eris is also the name of the Greek goddess of chaos, and if you're into Warhammer 40,000 at all, it was also the name of my high fleet funnily enough. Anyway, the actual ship here in Infinite Lagrange. Looks really cool, interesting hull that reminds me a lot of the Hurricane from EVE Online, which may be why I really enjoy the look of this ship. Anyway, the Eris-1 Light Rapid Fire Cannon Destroyer is readily available for most players. When you first jump into your first Phase 1 server, there is a little microtransaction for I think it's 99 pence, it's about a dollar something, and that will get you access to the Eris-1 Light Rapid Fire Cannon Destroyer, and in my opinion, it is well worth it. I have done a video on which microtransactions I think are worth it more than others, and this one was right at the top there, because early game, this is a great destroyer. It's a projectile-based ship, so of course it's using cannons to shoot down ships. It's not missiles, um, it's not lasers, it's straight up against armour um, using light cannons. Now, its firepower stats here are nothing to be sneezed at either. You've got a starting anti-ship firepower of 4,000, a good air defence of 1,800, and an admittedly low siege fire of 320, but in fairness, in the early game, siege fire is not really your thing, and it's very easy to get other very powerful ships like the Noma M470 or the Mare Nubium that do considerably better siege damage if you're looking to take out structures. What the Eris-1 Light Rapid Fire Cannon Destroyer does do is provides an early gunnery platform. If we have a look here at the AG-1156 Eris Generic Cannon and its stats, you'll see it has some really interesting abilities. Not only does it have that straight up 4000 per minute DPM, and you'll notice that this is one weapon system on this destroyer, which means you don't need to go crazy with the module adjustments, you can just go for that one simple thing, but it also gets interception capability and anti-aircraft range. Now you'll notice its attack priority is starting off at destroyers and frigates, but then it will go after corvettes and fighters and anti-aircraft range means it will counteract the aerial targets that attack you. This means it will fire back at any corvettes or aircraft that target your Eris-1 light rapid fire cannon destroyer. It will eventually go after them as well, um, once it's got no other targets to go for, obviously once it's gone past destroyers and frigates, it will then shoot at corvettes and fighters, but it does that anti-aircraft firepower back at anything that happens to try and shoot it 
This interception capability though is a really nice skill to have early on on a destroyer like this. As it says here, it has a chance to intercept missiles or torpedoes, and quite frankly, that is insanely good. It means if you're up against ships like say the Winged Hussar or the Borea or the uh, Reliat and things like that that are firing missiles at you, this has a chance to shoot those missiles down before it takes any damage from them. It's worth noting, this is a middle row ship. It's not a full on tank, but it's nice to have its own firepower to sort of actually, you know, to sort of keep itself alive. It's not really going to tank a fleet for you, but it does have very good survivability for a ship of this type and cost. You'll see here it also says high evasion, and so if we go into the propulsion system and actually have a look, you'll see that the ship has a basic 25% evasion, which is really, really good. It means basically not including your opponent's hit rate and size differencing and things like that, you've got a 25% chance of just not being hit. And if we go into the actual stats here of the, uh, the propulsion system as well, you can actually enhance this even further, a further 8% for each of these. So that's another 16% on top there. So 25 plus 16% because as far as I'm aware, these are, are additive, not uh, multi multiplicative. And um, you're looking at 16% on top of the 25% there which is really cool. That's a good amount of evasion and will help keep a ship like this alive for a surprising length of time. Then we have evasive maneuvers. If you can afford to spend 10 enhancement points on this, when the ship's HP falls to 20%, the invasion goes up by a further 40% and that lasts for 40 seconds, which means this ship becomes incredibly difficult to destroy for those 40 seconds. Now jumping back to its battery system, the enhancements on here are also pretty straightforward for the most part, but you've got some nice ones here at the end. So for example, you've got sinks all cannon weapons with this weapon system and reduces cooldown by 80% every 90 seconds for 8 seconds. Basically, when you are off, when you have your Eris out in combat, those different cannons, you can see there are five different cannons on this ship, will occasionally fire at different targets. You might have some of them intercepting incoming missiles, you might have some of them trying to shoot down aircraft that are attacking the light rapid fire cannon destroyer, and you might have some that are trying to actually shoot their target. If you're willing to put 15 enhancement points in this, then every 90 seconds you'll have an 8 second period where your weapons fire 80% faster and all 5 of those turrets are going to be locked onto the same target. Now you don't really get to choose what that target is, obviously if you have destroyers it usually will go for the attack priority of shooting destroyers first, and that can be a real nice hefty boost of firepower. As we look at the rest of it though, of course it's your typical increase all cannon damage, increase the uh, decrease the weapon system cooldown, increase hit rate against frigates and destroyers, which I do think is actually useful here, because you are going to be mainly shooting at frigates and destroyers, and then there's a hit rate against fighters corvettes. So if you find yourself going up against a lot of aircraft, this can be an interesting one to actually put some enhancement points into, as it will help it shoot down any aircraft that happen to attack the Ares-1. Then we have the Radar Anti-Missile Enhancement. I've saved the best for last here. I really like this skill and it does crop up on the other Eris hulls as well. It increases the chance of the weapon system to intercept missiles by 25% and torpedoes by 25%. This is just awesome. It means if missiles or torpedoes come anywhere near the Eris here, it can blap them out of the sky and just laugh as it does so. And that kind of brings us nicely towards the armoured type. I'm going to skip the heavy cannon type for now. We'll come back to that in a moment. Now here you can see I have been upgrading the armoured type because I love this ship a heck of a lot. This, in my opinion, is one of the better ships to have in a fleet if you need to have, if you've got some destroyers that otherwise might be a little bit squishy. This goes into the front row. It gets excellent reinforced armour, which will help keep it alive for a good length of time. Now you'll notice that if we come into the propulsion system, we still have that 25% evasion to start with, which means 25% approximately of shots coming your way are going to be avoided, and we still have that evasive maneuvers enhancement here as well for additional evasion. Um, once you hit 20%, 40% additional evasion for 40 seconds. That means a whole load of shots are going to be missing you once your ship reaches that low health points. Under its armor system though, you'll see here, I've gone pretty much for the full upgrades of increasing ship HP and physical resistance. Now, 
actually, in consideration on this, I'd probably swap these around now um, as I'm getting towards the later game and some of the bigger cannons are there. I'm going to add more physical resistance um, to reduce the amount of damage actually coming in. You'll see that I'm still sitting at 38, but you could theoretically take this to 46, which is going to do a lot of damage reduction to incoming projectile firepower. Now, that ultimately is your main basis. And you'll see that I'm now looking here, still at a firepower very similar from what we saw of the cannon type. In fact, I believe exactly the same as the cannon type, but we have significantly more armor. Starting off at 31,240 compared to the cannon types 27,960. And you can see I've upped that all the way to 40,612 with 38 armor on it which is just awesome that's really really powerful it means you absorb a lot of the shots that hit you and thanks to that evasion not a lot of shots do now you'll also notice i have put some points into the eris generic battery system because again we have that amazing radar anti-missile enhancement increases the chance of the weapon system to intercept missiles by 25 percent and torpedoes by 25 percent essentially this now means when torpedoes come my way and missiles come my way there's a 25% chance additional that I'll shoot them down because remember the generic cannon here has that interception capability. There is a chance I will shoot down, a fairly high chance actually, that I will shoot down any incoming missiles and torpedoes. If I don't shoot it down, then my evasion means they probably will miss me. And then even if the evasion fails, I will still take damage from that. Now, of course, missiles and torpedoes do have a much higher chance of hitting than cannons and energy weapons do, the lasers, the turrets do, um, and things like railguns. But ultimately the fact is you've just got very high basic defense and it's hard for things to actually hit you. Cannons are going to struggle because you've got good evasion and missiles are going to struggle because you've got good interception capabilities, which quite frankly, to me, makes the Eris-1 armored destroyer probably one of the best uh, of the destroyer tanks out there. And I don't leave the shipyard with a fleet with destroyers in without at least two to four of these in the same fleet, just to help absorb that incoming firepower. That then brings us finally to the heavy cannon type of the Eris. This, in my opinion, is one of the most versatile destroyers out there, as we'll see now. Now the first things to note about it are its armor and its propulsion system. If we go into the propulsion system and open this up, you'll see that straight away we have 25% basic evasion. We can then improve this by a further 16% using enhancement points. That gives us a 41% evasion rate, because as far as my testing shows, evasion is additive, not uh, percentile cumulative. I mean, you basically add those on top of each other for 41%. Either way, even if you just added 16% on top of the 25%, that's still pretty good, and you get a nice solid evasion there. If we then look at the armor, I've upgraded this a little bit with physical resistance, meaning we now have a ship here that has 36 physical resistance, 27,960 on the standard HP, and that 25% plus enhancement on its evasion. In addition to this, in our weapon systems, we still have the AG-1... A double 156 Eris generic cannon. This still has anti aircraft capability and that interception capability. What I'm basically getting at here is that you've got a destroyer that has high evasion, solid armor, can intercept incoming missiles and torpedoes, and can fight back against any aircraft that happen to take it on. That makes it a surprisingly tanky front row destroyer, and it is a front row. It's not as tanky, obviously, as the armored type, but it does still tank surprisingly well. Now, interestingly here, you'll see that it says against ships for its roles. Not against small ships, medium ships, or large ships, against ships. And this is because of how the AG-2300 Ashes of Eris heavy cannon operates. This thing is an absolute beast. You can see here, one uh, sorry, 10,010 DPM per minute. This is a standard cannon, so you are going to be using standard cannon upgrades here on it, um, which for me were really support a short supply on this recent server, but hey, there we go. It gets this amazing physical armor penetration roll. When the target is a super capital ship, which is to say um, a battle cruiser, a carrier, or theoretically when the larger ships are added, any of those, when it's a super capital ship, it has a chance to disable its physical armor. This means when you are shooting at any of those ships, you have a chance to just wreck their armor completely, meaning all future attacks just punch through straight to the hull, ignoring the armor. That is insanely good. 
Then if we look at the enhancements, first of all, if you're in the early game, the first thing to note is that if you're going up against frigates and destroyers, there are firing assistance enhancements and aiming mechanism enhancements that will increase the hit rate against frigates and destroyers by 15% each at full training. Well worth going into, especially since one of our main enhancements here is the full firepower upgrade. This reduces aiming time to increase firing speed. It reduces the cooldown of the weapon system by 40%, which is a significant DPM increase, and its hit rate in, uh, drops by 15%. That is your counter. Now, if you're going up against things like the Super Capitals, this doesn't matter too much. Those ships are big enough that your hit rate actually taking a 15% hit doesn't really do much, which is good to know because obviously our enhancements are only against frigates and destroyers. We can then also twin this with the Concentrate Fire periodically, which syncs all weapons in the system with the primary system to focus fire on one single target and reduces cooldown by 80% every 90 seconds for 8 seconds. This basically means that you fire 80% faster for those 8 seconds, there's then a 90, cool, a 90 second cooldown before it happens again. For those 8 seconds, this thing kicks out an insane amount of alpha, and if you happen to clear through their armor and wreck it, that's an insane amount of damage. This is why the first thing I tend to do after going for those two enhancements is go straight for barrel enhancements, ammo enhancements, ammo loader enhancements, basically anything that is going to increase the actual damage that this kicks out. And you can see here, one upgrade here, going from ammo loader enhancement four, uh, three to ammo loader enhancement four, that 3% equates to 753 anti-ship damage. And it still can fire against aircraft as well um, at 75 additional damage, but it, it, it doesn't tend to prioritize. That's what the small cannons are there for. But still, 753 additional damage per level of that. Now, on screen now, I'm going to put up a kill mail here, a battle report that shows the Ares 1 Heavy Cannon Destroyer doing 121.6 thousand damage in the space of a battle. This was the second highest performing uh, group in that entire fleet, despite the fact that I think I only had, what, four or eight of those, and the, sec uh, the highest performing was a group of ten of uh, fully upgraded Xeno Stingers. This is an incredibly hard-hitting ship. Obviously, if you're going up against those late-game things and you don't need to worry um, about like your hit rate, getting the full firepower and concentrate fire is going to be your priority, followed by additional damage. Earlier in the game, though, that's when you're looking at the firing assistance and aiming mechanism enhancements for that additional hit rate against frigates and destroyers. And I'd actually go for one of those at least first before going for the full firepower because that counteracts it perfectly. The second one, then, would actually overcompensate. And you'll find that against fleets, as long as you can fit, uh, enhance the heavy cannon destroyer exactly how you want it targeted to the fleet that you're going up against, this is not a disappointing ship at all. It can kick out an insane amount of firepower. I mean, you can see there, 13,744 DPM from the anti-ship fire. That is just absolutely insane for a ship that only costs seven command points. It also looks really cool and some of the skins look really cool on it as well. Anyway, but there we are. That is the Eris 1 Heavy Cannon Destroyer. This is one of my go-to ships in the mid to late game. I absolutely adore using this thing, although I tend to stick with the armoured type in the early game, swapping to the Heavy Cannon type once I'm up against cruisers and battle cruisers and above. Um, just because I find that's where it performs at its absolute peak. But there we go. If you happen to get your hands on this, well worth it. But the Eris in general, every single one of its variants, I genuinely think has a place in fleets. Like, if you've only got the cannon type, that is still a really solid destroyer. The armored type is probably the best of the destroyer tanks, and the heavy cannon type is probably one of the most versatile destroyers in the game for the mid to late section, especially. It does really, really well there. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions about the Ares 1. Is this a destroyer that you're using in your fleets? How do you enhance them? Which variants are you using most? Are you looking forward to a particular variant? Let me know this and more in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.